With the electronic age, we're seeing this considerable diminishment of the Catholic press. And this is a great, great question of worry and concern, especially two years ago, I hosted in Toronto the International Media Convention from North America. We had 600 journalists, print, electronic, media, television, they all came to Toronto for five days. It was a wonderful experience, but I've never sensed so much fear and sullen faces and concern when you heard one diocese after another saying, the newspaper is going to close. We can't afford the newspaper. We're going viral. We're going on the internet. We're turning to that. And this is a great concern. And it's also, people will say it's inevitable, but it's also kind of sad in some cases. Because some of the diocesan newspapers, particularly in the United States and Canada, offered a great contribution in service. And suddenly they're disappearing while these new forms will take over. And of course, this means job loss. And it also diminishes the way of reporting at times. Because sometimes what you say on the internet is not the same thing you would put in a printed article in a paper. The churches cannot ignore the great potential of online media if they wish to keep the truths of the faith in close touch with the emerging culture, especially with younger, growing generations. At the same time, we can't all say, forget the old media, we're going onto the internet alone, when large parts of our population still want something in their hands to read. So this becomes a great challenge. The task of church communicators, especially those of us involved in the Catholic Church, communicators, journalists, broadcasters, to keep working to develop and use new media to, to proclaim the gospel and the story of the church, but even more so, to promote a culture of dialogue. A single medium is no longer enough to capture the full attention of the audience. We have to be working at all levels now, and sometimes it's a dizzy experience. Print, electronic, Father, we're sending this out on Twitter, this is going here. What's Twitter? What's all this? You know? Don't worry, Father. Or the expression in my office is, chill out, Father. We'll handle it. This is what you hear when you're working with the 20 and 30-somethings. You know what? When they know what they're doing, I stand in awe. Because they are the new evangelizers. They are the new witnesses. This is the new Areopagus of which Paul spoke. Our great challenge in this area of Facebook, of Twitter, and all the rest consists in presenting the profound message of Jesus and the teaching of the church without being sidetracked by technology's superficial aspects. An almost exclusive use of texts and emails means that as a society, we're losing some of the ability to build interpersonal relationships and communication. This is necessary for living together and building up the community of the world and of the church. Using the new media requires attention prudence, history, respect, and also a concern for the whole picture. In our efforts to communicate, we have to choose between engaging the culture around it or confronting it. And this is where you can tell if some of these so-called Catholic websites are really Catholic and they're interested in building up the culture. When you see some of the hate and the vitriol and the calumny and the slander, this has nothing to do with confronting the culture, with engaging it. It's about condemnation. And there's a strong element out there today who would like us all to become agents of condemnation. I couldn't help but think of this as I was in Rome in October, telling the story and being imbued with that beautiful story of a little five foot nine brother, not five foot nine, five foot two brother in Montreal who engaged the culture long before the internet, and the world was engaged by him, if it was any indication of what we saw in Rome. We have to avoid the great danger in all of this of chasing after relevance. Some people work so hard to be relevant that they spin themselves hopelessly into irrelevance. We who are involved in communications and broadcasting must have a passion for the truth, must have a concern for others, we must be concerned with depth and beauty, history, and the whole story. We must be passionately in love with telling the story, true, the, the story of truth. 